It's Tuesday night as we invite you to a decidedly informal time where anyone under the sun is unlikely to drop in at any time to talk things over with Archie. Almost no one may drop in tonight. The people we're sure are going to be here are not very many. Starring Zach Cassidy as Finnegan, Megan Claude Nikki as Miss Duffy, and AJ Carey as Archie the Manager. Join us, won't you, to Duffy's Tavern. Hello, Duffy's Tavern with Elite Meat to Eat. Archie the manager speaking, Duffy ain't here. Oh, hello, Duffy. Business, staggering. Customers, yeah, about the same. Uh, oh, by the way, Duffy, we got some mail here. An advertisement in the mail from a new paper towel company. Huh? Well, I know we bought some last month, but they go fast. I think the customer's been blotting instead of rubbing. Any more mail? Uh, yeah. There's a letter here with a black border around it. You, you want me to open it, huh? Uh, okay, let's see. <clears throat> Mr. and Mrs. Hiram Cavendish of the Cavendish Undertaking Parlor announced the marriage of their daughter, Lucy, to Dr. James P. Briggs, prominent surgeon. Why, that Cavendish is a real go-getter. And there's another letter for... Hey, wait a minute. This one's for me. I'll call you back, Duff. Uh, what you looking so puzzled about, Mr. Archie? Well, I got a letter here from Morton Q. Pavenmeyer on Newton Road in Astoria, Long Island. So? Well, I knew a Morton Q. Pavenmeyer on, on Newtown Road in Astoria, Long Island. I wonder if it could be the same guy. <laughs> Don't be silly. Newton Road is probably just crawling with Morton Q. Pavenmeyers. Heh. <laughs> Let me see. Uh, sure enough, it's from me nephew, Morton. Oh, really? Yeah, Morton, my little nephew. Me aunt's kid. On your mom's side? Uh, no, on the riffraff side. Let's see what he has to say. Dear Uncle Archie. <laughs> Eddie. What kind of kid spells uncle U-N-C-L-E? <laughs> Ain't that cute. And right, too. Uh, how old is he, anyways? Uh, let's see now. Uh, Morton was born the year Uncle Joe was going on release. He got good behavior, so that was only a nickel. But got sent back for forging the judge's signature, so that was another two years. Uh, that was in 19... Uh, he must be quite a young man by now. Uh, great math there. Uh, what does the letter say, anyhow? Oh, yeah. Dear Uncle Archie, my family has gone to the Catskills and thought it would be beneficial if I were to come and stay with you until they return. Holy cow, Eddie! We're going to have a kid! Ain't it wonderful what the vitamins can do? Ah, here, let's see. I will arrive Friday at the store. That's today! P.S. Congratulations, on being the first millionaire in the family. How does it feel to live in a 15-room penthouse? Now, where do you get that idea? Oh, we've been corresponding. Attention, letter writers. Does your fountain pen leak at high altitudes? All right, Eddie, all right. So I took a little liberty. That wasn't liberty. That was sheer treason. So where's this little fellow gonna sleep? Oh, with me, naturally. Oh, I forgot, in one of those 15 rooms, huh? So it ain't exactly 15 rooms. It ain't exactly two rooms, unless you count the pigeon coop. But what about feeding him? Feed him? Oh, that's easy, right here at the tavern. Well, if you feel that way about the boy, why wouldn't it be easier just to leave him in a cardboard box in an alley out back? Look, Eddie, there are worse things in the world than the food here at Duffy's Tavern. The uh, hi, Archie. Oh, hello, Finnegan. I was just telling Eddie here that me little nephew Morton is coming down tonight, and I'm wondering what to do with him. Finnegan, do you know anything about young, growing children? Uh, I don't know. I never grew any. I can see you and Morton will be nice playmates. Oh, sure. I love kids. Oh, you do? Yeah, there's something so childish about them. The uh, kids love me too, you know. I got a knack for not making them feel inferior to me. I don't know how I do it. <laughs> yeah. 
Hey, come to think of it, you ran a baby watching service once, didn't you? Whatever happened to that? It didn't pan out. Things were going all right for a while, but uh, as soon as the kids learned to talk, their mothers would fire me. Say, Arch, how old's your nephew? Uh, about 11, I think. 11? Aw, uh, that's a nice ripe age for a child. He's a lucky boy. I often wish I had an uncle. Oh, your parents never had no brothers, huh? Nah, just sisters. I'm sure tired of being a niece. Well, it's uh, never too late to change. Say, Finnegan, I better explain this to you. How many sexes are there? Don't be absurd, Arch. There's three. Huh? Yeah, three. Men, women, children. Well, I guess Martin will be safe with you then. Now, let's see. Hello, Archie. Hello, Finnegan. Hey, Miss Duffy. Uh, hiya, Miss Duffy. Say, Miss Duffy, you look particularly beautiful tonight. Oh, no, I don't. Oh, yes, you do. Oh, no, I don't. Gee, maybe I was wrong. I think you should have quit while you were ahead there. But there is certainly something different about you tonight. Yeah, I'm wearing a new shade of lipstick. Oh, is that it? I thought you cut yourself shaven. Honestly, Finnegan, sometimes you act just like a man. Say, Arch, what's she getting sore about? I ain't say nothing. Oh, I know, but you know her. With that face of hers, she's quite sensitive. Oh. Well, why don't you go apologize to her? Okay. Hey, Miss Duffy. I'm so sorry you're so homely. Finnegan, did your parents have any children that lived? Oh. Please, Miss Duffy, try to be more ladylike tonight. We're expecting a stranger in our monks. Me nephew. Your, uh, nephew? Huh? What's he like? Miss Duffy, there's no use baiting your hooks on this one. You'll have to throw him back. He's only 11 years old. Ha! <laughs> to listen to you. An individual would think all I ever do is chase men. So? Suppose I told you that I have as many girlfriends as I do boyfriends. Miss Duffy? We have as many employees as we do customers, but that don't mean we don't want business. Look, Archie, just because I show a little interest in your nephew doesn't mean you have to go through a whole routine. And if you keep your mouth shut, maybe I can tell you how to take care of him. Where did you ever learn about taking care of children? From my mother. After all, she brought me up. She got any other references? It so happens I was very well raised. Mama always tells me how before I was born, she would only think beautiful thoughts, listen to only beautiful symphonies and concerts and operas. Somewhere along the line, someone must have snuck in a Spike Jones record. Uh, hey, Art, I've just been thinking. A likely story. Uh, what about? What do you do with your little nephew when he gets you? Uh, I don't think I'll be able to take him to go see a burlesque show. What are you going to do with your little nephew when he gets here? Uh, I, I think I'll take him to go see a burlesque show. Burlesque show? Finnegan, Morton is just a child. So what? I'll explain it to him as it goes along. Finnegan, you can't take an 11-year-old to a burlesque show. Oh, don't worry, Arch. He'll be older when he gets out of there. Maybe you got a point there. Okay. But leave us not take away his innocence. Don't sit too close to the runway. Oh, Eddie? Yes, sir? Morin should be here any minute. I'd have for him to have to see the place looking so crummy. Is there anything we can do about that? Yeah, we could blindfold him. Eddie, if a certain waiter keeps cracking wise, there's liable to be a new porter in the house on 92nd Street. Now leave us clean the place up. By the way, who's that un couth looking stranger sitting over in the corner. I don't know. Well, tell him to leave. We've got enough regular bums in here as it was without having to cater to strangers. Go ahead, throw him out. You mean that thick-set gentleman with the cauliflower ears and the brass knuckles sticking out of his breast pocket? Yeah, that's the one. What are you waiting for? Uh, I was just waiting to make sure we were thinking of the same guy. You... You mean that fellow over there that looks about six foot four, weighing about 300 pounds, reading the Wrestlers Weekly? Yeah, that's the guy. Now go kick him out. He ain't bought a beer in over an hour anyhow. Well, he's having one on me right now. 
Eddie, quit stalling. For the last time, I want that guy ejaculated. I think that might give him mixed signals. Now then, where can Morton sleep tonight? Achi. Yeah? How about having him sleep in our parlor? Your parlor? Uh, Don't you usually have a date on Friday nights? Yeah, but tonight I have a date with a guy that's interested in me for my mind. Um? Morton could sleep on the horsehair sofa. Horsehair sofa? That's the one that your mother faints on when your dad comes home sober. So what? You think I want the kid crushed to a pulp? I guess he might be better off sleeping with me after all. Uh, Mr. Archie? Uh, yeah? About that muscular gentleman you asked me to kick out. Yeah? Is that Big Luck still here? Uh, yeah, he, uh, he says it's a free country. And never mind what the bum says, throw him out. And his father said that if you want him thrown out, why don't you do it and fight him? <laughs> He's lucky this is a free country. Look, I'm gonna let Morton sleep with me tonight, so... I'd like you to go clean up my room, Eddie. And don't forget to take me socks off the radiator and stick them in the closet. Yeah. And another thing. You know that autographed photo of Fifi LaVert, the striptease queen? Uh Uh-huh. Pin a handkerchief over the waist down. Better yet, use me Harvard pennant. It'll class up the place even better. And another thing. Tell me, landlady, that I shall have a house guest and we will need an extra pitcher of water in the morning. Sure thing, coach. I'm on my way. Oh, better wait until I get back, Eddie. Why? Where are you going? I gotta go down to the laundry. Tell Mr. Lee to hurry up with me other shirt. Uh, I'll be back in a minute. Uh, sweep up the flow, clean out my room, throw out the customers, hang up my socks. Eddie Green, you were out of your mind when you said, not interested to join the French Foreign Legion. Lousy flat feet. Where would it all end? I beg your pardon, sir, but can you tell me where I find the owner of this place? The owner? Yes. A gentleman by the name of Archie. Oh, him? Uh, Well, he'll be right back. He's out, uh, transacting a big deal. Something to do with China. Uh, you his nephew Morton, huh? I'm Eddie. Eddie? Oh, yes. Eddie. Archie's valet. Well, not the head valet, but I'm working up to it, though. So this is Duffy's Tavern, huh? Sorry I had to come while you were under reconstruction. Yeah, it seems to be about the right time that started. What weird-looking people around here. Who's that tall, stupid-looking one in the apron that just walked in? You mean the one with the big ears? Yeah. Oh, that's Uncle Archie. Well, 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 Morton. Uh, hello, Uncle Archie. Morton Q. Pavinmeyer. You know, the last time I seen you, you were this tall. I'd never forget that day. I picked you up from your crib. My, you certainly have grown. I suppose you go to school now. Oh, yes. At 11 years old, I remember how you must feel about school, Morton. But kid, listen to young Kalachi. Stick it out for another year or two. A little extra education never hurt nobody. Another year or two? Uncle Archie, I plan on going to college. College? Oh, you inherited the family thirst for knowledge. When do you think you'll go to college? Well, I'm eligible now, but my mother doesn't want me to matriculate too young. Oh, that's good. First, go to college, then you should worry about marriage. Uh, by the way, what's that book under your arm there? Oh, this? It's just an autobiography of the Amuyai Caliphate. The, oh my god, Caliphites? Of course, I read it myself. <laughs> Any other books you've been reading? Oh, The Rise and Fall of the Roman Empire, James Joyce's Ulysses. Oh, yeah, that Ulysses. Uh, did you like that? Oh, I thought it was splendid. Yeah? Remind me, I'll take you up to Grant's tomb one of these days. Well, uh, we'll, we'll drive up in my Cadillac limousine with the fleet front body. Cadillac limousine? You must be awfully rich, Uncle Archie. Rich is a crooked politician, kid. So as you know, it's not that hard to make dough if you got the right connections. You know, Rockefeller tells me to buy 50 million shares of that, and Henry Ford tells you to sell 50 million shares of that, and before you know it, you got a hundred bucks in your pocket. Gee, it must be wonderful to know all of those people. Uncle Archie, do you know anybody in radio? Uh, yeah, yeah, of course I do. Why do you ask? I want to get information, please. 
Oh, that's a cinch, kid. Yeah? Do you know Clifton Fadiman? Do I know him? Yeah. In fact, me and him was cockneyed in London together. Then maybe you can get me on the program. I'll see what I can do. But you gotta remember, everybody on that show is several years your major. To them, you're just a little quizzling. Well, that may be so, Uncle Archie. But just the same, I've listened to that program every week for the last three years and never missed a question. Oh, is that so? That's right. Not once. Hmm. Quick, name me the first president of the United States. George Washington. Maybe we got something here. Tell you what we'll do, kid. We'll start training tonight. We'll get a board of experts tonight and set up a quiz show for you. You know, it'll be a good practical experience. If there's any bugs in your head, we can iron them out. Uncle Ashi. Yes, Martin? Aren't you getting tired of massaging my head? Look, Morton, before a fighter goes into the ring, what does his trainer do? Massages his muscles. You know, makes them supple. Now, leave us get started. I'll introduce you to your experts. Oh, Miss Duffy? Yes? That's Miss Duffy, our expert on, uh, maritime relations. <laughs> Miss Duffy, this is Morton. Hapa, hapa, hapa. You're cute. This dame don't draw the age limit nowhere. Uncle Archie, she's attractive, isn't she? Why, thank you, Morton. Unfortunately, Morton, I think all that studying you're doing has ruined your eyesight. Of all the nerve. Now, Miss Duffy, my uncle sometimes carries a joke too far. Allow me to offer his apologies on my behalf. Morton, when my behalf has said something that it's ashamed of, it'll apologize for itself. Next, I would like to shake hands with Mr. Clifton Finnegan. Uh, hello, Morton. Nice to meet you. Here, have a Tootsie Roll. Oh, I'm afraid I must decline, Mr. Finnegan. Experience has taught me that excessive consumption of carbohydrates is detrimental to the body. Hey, Arch, d- does he want to not want the Tootsie Roll? Finnegan, you heard the kid as well as I did. Give him the Tootsie Roll. Now leave us get this quiz going. Now, folks, for each question missed by our experts, Duffy's Tavern will pay out to the ASCII of said question, uh, 25 cents in free lunch tickets. I was only kidding, Duffy. Now, experts, the first question is three parts. Who said, of the people, for the people, and by the people? Mr. Finnegan. The we the people. Uh... I'm afraid this time you're wrong. Morton? Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln is right. That gives you three out of three. And now, a scientific question. How does the process of pasteurization get its name? Morton? From its inventor, Louis Pasteur. Sorry, Morton. Better luck next time. But, Uncle Archie, it is Pasteur. Pasteur. Pasteurized. Morton? You ever hear of home gemized milk? Yes. Is there such a guy as Hojimi? No. Touche! Mr. Finnegan, where did Pasteurized get its name? Uh, was it one of the moving pictures of Paul Newman? Oh, uh, could you be more specific, please? The green pastures? Correct! Better luck on the next question, Morton. Uh, now this question comes from a Miss Fran Duffnick, an East Irish New Jersey housewife. What is meant by the reconversion plan? Well, as I understand it, the plan to reconversion lies in the general reduction of corporate and individual levies, which should, to economic compulsion and consumer good demand, resolve in an absolute parity of distribution. Morton, would you stop talking like a child? How about you, Finnegan? You have your hand up. Anything I could add to the previous answer would be mere repetition. Oh, you don't know, huh? Now, uh, anyone else? Well, then Miss Duffnick will receive those free lunch tickets. Good luck finding you, Miss Duffnick. Now, the next question is a musical question submitted by Mr. Sam Sideye. The question is, what season does the following sound suggest?
Leap year. What month? Who cares? Well, I think I'll only have to give you full credit on this. By the way, Morton, did you recognize the song? Oh, yes. It was Mendelssohn's Wedding March. That is correct. From Richard Wagner's famous opera, Pragliacci. That's a little better, Morton. Now time for the last half of the question. What state is represented by the following song? Morton? Carolina. North or South? What's the difference? What's the difference? 50 million lives were lost in the Civil War, and he's asking what the difference is. Morton, I'm afraid you're hopeless. Yeah. I mean, you've got a 15-room penthouse and a Cadillac limousine, and I've learned one thing. It pays to be ignorant. Oh, it's never dull down at Duffy's Tavern. That was the end of today's broadcast, with a special voice done by Megan Clot Nikki. In two weeks, Retro Static Radio returns with the classic, ABC Murders. But if you can't wait those two weeks, then next week, the table read for the ABC Murders will be up on our Kofi for one-time and monthly supporters. Yes, for as low as $5, you can listen to AJ Carey, Megan Glodnicki, and Zach Cassidy laugh way too much at deciding voices, redoing takes, or just having the time of their lives during the first read-through. The one for Archie's nephew is already up, and hearing the boys react to Megan's Morton voice is just a hoot and a half. It also helps out actually paying these people. There's a lot of goals that we have in mind, but even without financially backing us, you can still support Retrostatic Radio by liking, sharing, subscribing, and giving us five-star reviews wherever you listen. It is the best way to show you enjoy our productions and allow us to continue to grow. I'm Arthur Carey, and this concludes our broadcast day. Good night, and God bless.